Michael there. I've heard him say Michael there. Again, we hear again the gospel. We read only the gospel. Let's just take that according to Matthew chapter 18. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who thinkest thou is greater in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus, calling to him a little child, said to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, he is the greater in the kingdom of heaven. He who shall receive one such little child of my name, receive of me. And he who shall scandalize one of these little ones that believes in me, it were better for him than the millstone that should be hanged about his neck, that he should be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of scandals, for it must needs be that scandals come. But nevertheless, woe to that man by whom the scandal cometh. And if, and if thy hand or thy foot scandalize thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to go into life maimed or lame than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. And if thy eyes scandalize thee, Pluck it out and cast it there from thee. It is better for thee, having one eye, to enter the kingdom of life, than having two eyes to be cast to hell of fire. That ye see that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Most of the words of today's holy gospel. Father, Son, the Ghost of Men. May the feast, the apparitions of St. Michael the Archangel. And St. Michael is interesting also this feast, among other feasts, dropped shortly before Vatican II. All these feasts, especially, speak to our faith. We say that all that matters is that you believe in the 12 articles of the Creed. All that matters is that you believe that Jesus Christ is one God. We have one modernist teaching the Catechism, the modern Catechism of the Catholic Church, which is not a Catechism of the Catholic Church, that even if a Protestant, as long as he believes in the Blessed Trinity in the right way, that he belongs to our Church. But whoever believes in the Blessed Trinity believes that he is God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God the Son became man and said, I am truth. And every word that proceeds from the mouth of God is true. And therefore, we do not only believe that Jesus Christ is God, we do not only believe that there is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And one, blue, one belief in truth that we have is the same religion in the New Testament that was the religion of the Old Testament. It is the same God in the New Testament who was the God. Many heresies claim that the God of the two testaments. And in the Old Testament, we have one common angel who is And who argued in heaven with other angels. His name is St. Michael. And St. Michael, who protected the Jews in the Old Testament, he has the same mind, St. Michael, that protects the Catholic Church in the New Testament. And he is the same one who led the angels in war. The angels of justice and life, who said that they were, who is like unto God, and obeyed God, they fought a great battle, a great war, with their great intellects. And the angels had to decide, do I believe every word is in the mouth of God, or do I only believe those words that make sense to me? Those words that I believe are important. The head of the angels named Lucifer said, I only believe those words that make sense to me. I do believe the words that proceed from the mouth of God. But only the essential words. Only the most important ones. That God is a creator. That God is a judge and so on. But I don't accept those things that God says which make no sense to me. 
Such as when God says, I am going to take all of my divine nature, that infinitely huge nature, which is much larger than our universe, and I'm going to put it inside of a six-foot-tall man. I'm going to store it all inside of a six-foot-tall man. And the second person of God is going to enter into the six-foot-tall man. And he is going to rightly be called God, and yet he shall be truly a man. This is insane. It makes no sense. And all of the elements that come with it, such as there be a mother of God who is not God, such as there be a dying on the cross for our sins, and then there be holy pictures, and there be prayers, and there be customs. These customs are not essential. Therefore, I don't accept any of them that I don't think make sense. One of the lower angels stood up and said, Who is like unto God? If God wants to become man, if God wants us to wear scapulars, if God wants us to hold a rosary in our hands, if God wants the Holy Father to consecrate Russia, one of the several hundred countries in the world, and just one country among many, but if he wants us to consecrate Russia to the Nakhara Mary, if he wants us to genuflect, he wants us to build buildings that are called churches in the house of God, although God is everywhere. I accept all things that God says, all things that he requests, either directly from his own power and mouth, or through the prophets and through the Holy Church. Who is like unto God? St. Michael fought against Satan because he believed that the Word of God was more important to hold on to than the reason of Lucifer, than the wisdom of an angel. And now in the 20th century, we find that and now the 21st century, we find that man, he is just as satanic as Lucifer himself. He has taken on the spirit of Lucifer. And not only the Satanists, but also those that call themselves Catholic. We are going to accept whatever makes sense to us, and we will not accept every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. We don't accept every decree of the Church. We don't accept all the teachings of the Fathers. We don't accept every history recorded in the sacred scripture. Only those parts that seem most important to us and that really matter. Pope Leo XIII in the last century, Pope Pius IX in the last two centuries, century and a half ago, reminded us that we believe whatever proceeds from the mouth of God because it proceeds from the mouth of God. We believe every word contained in sacred scripture and every doctrine and history taught by our fathers. They were wicked men who in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s laid the foundations of Vatican II. One of the things they did was they said, that we believe in St. Michael. We have no problem with St. Michael. He is a wonderful angel. But did he really appear in the New Testament like he did in the Old? Did he really appear in the church when Pope St. Sylvester was blessing the church and consecrating the church of St. John Lateran? And St. Michael came in and said, You're a nice Pope, you're a holy Pope, but I'm going to finish the consecration of this church step aside. And when the angel of God says, I'm finishing the consecration of the church, holy father or not, you step aside. And the angel, St. Michael, consecrated that church. He completed the anointing of the altar. He burnt the fire upon the altar. That's what he did. And St. John Lateran, from that day forward, is the principal church of the Catholic Church. Because many churches have been consecrated by popes and by bishops 
who were supposed to consecrate churches. But that church alone was consecrated by St. Michael the Archangel. Therefore, it is the church of the Catholic Church, and it is the official church of the Holy Father, St. John Lateran. Because St. Michael really was there. And he really appeared many times in the New Testament. He appeared in a cave to which the occasion of the feast today on May the 8th. And a farmer lost his cow. They couldn't find the cow. The cow got stuck into a small cave opening in Italy. So they thought they would have mercy on the cow, and mercy killed the cow. So a man took an arrow and he shot the arrow at the cow. The arrow turned around and went back and almost killed the man that shot it. The arrow turned around. It did not kill the cow. They then fled to the Holy Father and said, what are we going to do? He said, well, let us pray and fast for three days and see what God wants us to do. And St. Michael appeared to the Holy Father. And they went to the cave. The cow was released on his own. And they saw the cave was shaped like into a church. And St. Michael said, turn this into a church in honor of the angels. In honor of St. Michael. And so they began to say Mass there in that cave, and they built a church over it. And that's the origin of the feast being May the 8th. Did Boniface the Fourth, who wasn't even a saint, did he really happen to him? And other times, also in the history of our church, the angels have showed themselves. Many times the angels have showed themselves because the angels are real. The good angels are real, and the bad angels, whom we call devils, are real. And every day they are before us and with us. What does our Lord Jesus Christ say in the Gospel? God Himself, and we read in the Gospel today, God made man said, Woe to you who bring scandals! For it must needs be that scandals come. But woe to him by whom scandals come, for every child that is perverted. How many children are perverted in 2021? So many children are perverted. It is one of the special points made by Our Lady of Quito back in 1600 that one of the hallmarks of the 20th century, now the 21st century, is that children throughout the entire world shall be perverted. They shall lose their innocence because of the wickedness of adults that scandalize them. What does scandal mean? Scandal means to teach another how to sin who did not know how to sin. To lead another into sin who would not have gone into sin unless you led them into sin. All adults are always ready to sin. So scandal doesn't really happen to adults, though sometimes it can. But children are innocent. And children are not ready for sin. But what does our world do by the television? It scandalizes them. We teach children who are not inclined to impurity how to be impure at the youngest age. Who are not inclined to believe lies, to learn how to lie and believe lies at the youngest age. Who are not inclined to extreme possession of things, to extreme uh, greed, to teach them greed at the young age, to teach them vanity at a young age, so that all the seven capital sins are taught to children at the very earliest age. This is scandal. Now, what did Jesus Christ say in the Gospel that we read today? Every child that is scandalized has an angel, and the angel stands in the face of God. This is our Jesus Christ telling us that every one of us has a guardian angel. It is a dogma of our faith. It is infallibly true. Every man on earth, every woman on earth, every child on earth, has a guardian angel that stands in the face of God. And the angel notes the difference between the sins that we commit because we desire sin 
And the sins we commit because another person taught us how to sin. And another person led us into sin. And our culture dragged us into sin. The angel will have no defense against the sins that we have chosen to commit. But consider the wrath of the angel and the anger of the angel when he sees that those that are in the adult life, that those who are in control of the world, are using their power, their influence, their knowledge, their capacity in every conceivable and inconceivable way to corrupt the children. That's what the communists do. That's what the masons do. What the satanists do. Give us your children and we will corrupt them. We will educate them in sin in the public schools. We will teach them how to know, love, and serve Satan. How to go after sin. We will teach them to desire the things of this world and the things of hell. And not desire the things of God and the things of the heaven. This is scandal. There are very many angry angels who are not happy. Do stand in the face of God. When the time of judgment comes, how many angels shall be present at our judgment? There shall be the guardian angel. There shall be the guardian devil. The devil that shall point out truthfully all our sins. There shall be the guardian angel who shall point out truthfully every time we rejected grace. They shall both be angry to those that are in sin. And then many other angels will come. Imagine the angels that shall be present at the death of a woman involved in pornography. How many millions of souls are damned because of her and committed sin because of her impurity? Or those in Hollywood who have dedicated themselves to enticing men with sin. How many angels will be present at their judgment? Every single soul that was inclined and led to sin by the impurity and impure dress of women, by the wicked teaching of men, and by their wicked ways, every single angel affected shall be present at the judgment. There shall be thousands of angels in some cases, hundreds of thousands of angels present at the judgment of the sinner who has scandalized little ones. They shall be very angry. When the Lord Jesus Christ said, Woe to him who scandalizes these little ones, because there is an angel standing in the presence of God. He wasn't talking about a very little face and things on his head. He was talking about the angel that stood before Daniel. Daniel, man of great desires. I come to tell you about the things that are to come. And when Daniel the saint, Daniel who stood up against the two judges and destroyed them when he was 12 years old, Daniel was not at all afraid of the fire or the furnace like his three friends. Daniel was not afraid of anything the world had to bring at him. But when Daniel saw that angel, he says in his holy book, And I trembled with terror and fear, and could not stand because of the presence of an angel of God. If Daniel cannot stand in the presence of the angel of God, and St. John, the beloved disciple, would also stand in the presence of God, and we will see how the same power of angel that Daniel stood in front of in the Old Testament, he was the same power of angel that St. John stood in front of in the New Testament, and it was probably the same angel. And St. John also could not stand the presence of the power and majesty and terror of an angel of God. In both cases, the angel had to reach down and touch Daniel in the Old Testament and reach down and touch St. John in the New Testament and say, Fear not, I will give you strength and power to bear my presence. When the Lord Jesus Christ said, When you stand 
tranquilize another, you girls, by impure dress? Will you scandalize another by wicked ways? Remember that every one that is scandalized has an angel who is a warrior who carries a sword like St. Michael, who is very, very strong in battle, who already fought the greatest battle that could ever be fought against evil, because every angel fought the most bloody battle that could ever be fought against Lucifer himself and against his entire cohort in the largest battle that has ever happened in the history of the world and ever will happen. And they fought with the entirety of their being and drove Satan and his cohort into hell. Those are warrior angels. They are exceedingly powerful and they make us tremble. They are looking in the face of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ mentioned this example in the Gospel to help us to realize how serious is the sin of scandal and how important it is to avoid teaching another how to sin. <coughs> Nowadays we call scandal when you shock someone. That is not scandal. This is the wicked scandal of the world. Jesus Christ speaks of this scandal when he says, Blessed are ye who are not scandalized in me. That's a fake scandal. It is the scandal of the world. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you said that. That's a scandal of Satan. But the true sin of scandal which causes the angels who stand in the presence of God to be extremely angry <coughs> it is the scandal of teaching another how to sin who would not have otherwise sinned. This kind of scandal, most have experienced in their life. And they will have a special punishment. Hence what must be done. Those who are guilty of the scandal must make great reparation. Remember Lord Jesus Christ also said, it were better to have a millstone tied about the neck and be cast into the sea than to scandalize these little ones. We must fight against this sin, which is extremely prevalent in our age. It's a great temptation in our time, for instance, for mothers to babysit their children by putting in these modern cartoons which teach a child the obedience of Satan and not the obedience of God, which teach a child impurity at a very young age, which destroy the innocence of the child, and this is a scandal. One must be very careful to avoid using the TV as a babysitter of children. So it is necessary to combat the sin of scandal. And there are really angels really in heaven. And angels are here on this earth. And angels are continuously protecting us and continuously carrying messages from earth to heaven and from heaven to earth. Remember what Jacob saw when he fell asleep. He saw a countless number of angels going up the ladder into heaven <coughs> and descending the ladder down to the earth. Jacob's ladder is real. The ladder still exists. And there are still angels carrying messages to heaven. They will carry our prayers to God. They carry our, our sorrow to God. Remember when Tobias wept because his wife rejected him. And on the same day, Sarah wept because her very servant rejected her. And they were alone, abandoned by the entire world, and they wept in their rooms. What does the scripture tell us in the book of Tobias? An angel carried their tears all the way up to the height of heaven, above all the nine choirs of angels, into the very presence of God himself. The tears were heard by God because they were carried by an angel. And there was a real carrying of a real angel of the tears of Sarah and the tears of Tobias up into heaven. And then God sent an angel, Saint Raphael, down to earth, one of the seven highest angels that stands in the presence of God. Saint Raphael went down to bring Tobias to get a new wife and to cure the sorrow and the sadness of Sarah 
who was, had lost seven husbands, and to cure the sorrow of Tobias, who could not find a good wife, and to cure the sorrow of Tobias' his father, who had the same name, Tobias, who was made blind, and who was a holy and saintly Tobias, and to take away his blindness, and to bring glory back to their country and to, to, their, to their family. It was an angel that did all these things. Angels are always with us. They are most real. They are working around us right now. And every soul has an angel that stands in the face of God. And the angels are not pleased with scandal. And each one whom we have scandalized in our life, that guardian angel shall be present at our judgment. Therefore, let us remember that the angels stand before the face of God and let us make reparation for our scandals that we have been guilty of throughout our life. And also remember what true scandal is and not the false wicked scandal that the devil calls scandal. Let us not be scandalized in Christ but rather avoid our own scandals that we cause others through teaching them how to sin enticing them into sin who would not otherwise have sinned. Let's remove this great sin from the world, the greatest sin against the fifth commandment, which is the murdering of the soul. Scandal is the murdering of the soul. Do not fear he who can kill your body, that's murder, but rather he who can kill your body and afterwards cast your soul into hell fire. Fear the one that can kill the soul. So let us fight against this grave sin of scandal, that each of us experience as part of our normal life today in the modern world, and ask the angels to protect us in our continuing forward in our battle. And remember, the angels are most real. The same Saint Michael, who defended the Jews in the Old Testament, he defends the Catholics in the New. The same angels of the Old Testament are also the angels of the New. The same God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New. And God is the same yesterday, today, and in secula, and forever. So are his rules, so are his requirements for those that love him. Let's be among those that love him and be faithful and ask our guardian angel to help us in the battle against principalities and powers and the lords of this darkness. So close together to all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.